Okay. Okay, with me, folks, is uh, Joe Orazzi, and uh, Joe is the publisher of La America. He published this book back in 2018, and we reviewed it in Primo Magazine, and we gave it a thumbs up. It's an excellent book. Uh, uh, briefly speaking, it's a, um, it's a saga of immigrants from Italy. They come from different parts of Italy. They come across uh, the Atlantic Ocean, they settle here in the United States, uh, at the turn of the century, maybe 10 years or so after that. And uh, it's just an involved uh, saga of characters, and plots and subplots. And when I was reading it, I said to myself that this would make a great miniseries. And Joe, that's exactly what it seems to be happening. And that it's becoming a miniseries. And so this is very exciting for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, and, and whenever I was writing the book, I was thinking in those terms too. Of course, and, you know, I was raised in an age of, visuals and and you know a lot of television a lot of movies and and i think in those terms and um but i couldn't help but imagine um that this should someday and i know i'm just a tad biased but this should someday um be turned into uh something like a mini series because there's so much here and there's so much that people don't know even us italians don't know yeah yeah well, I thought the story itself, the way it flowed, was very well written, and just the way you, you know, you captured the characters. Um, just briefly tell us about the about the book. There's three characters, correct, from different parts of Italy that uh, go aboard a ship from Naples and kind of make their way here to the United States. Just give us more about, uh, you know, the characters and what it's all about. Okay, so so um, this this takes place in 1915 uh, when a lot of Italians were emigrating to the United States. Uh, and there are three families. The families are, are fictional. Uh, the events are, um, are absolutely historically accurate. As a matter of fact, it took me about 12 years to write this book, 10 of which um, were probably research, uh, because uh, that was really important to me. But the three characters, one is from uh, Palermo. He's a stowaway, a kid who's a stowaway from Palermo, Sicily. But he's kind uh, of like a criminal. He's like a. Just really interrupt you real quick. He's kind of like a, uh, a a bit of a criminal, correct? On the streets of yes. Palermo. Yeah, he's he's. We call him a street rat, uh, and, right. and uh, he wants to he wants to make his way up um, in that world, and uh, but he eventually ends up on this steamer called uh, um, the Santa Ana um, in Palermo, and uh, then there's another family from Calabria, uh, from a little village called Sera San Bruno. Uh, that's the Moscas. And then there's the Grimaldi family from Naples. Uh, they are in construction. And all of them end up on the same steamship in 1915 uh, to make their way to La Merica. La Merica is what Italians used to say uh, about this country. That's how they refer to this country as La Merica, right. which is why the book obviously is named that way. So they, they don't know each other. Uh, they come from different worlds, and they settle in different worlds. One in in a uh, tailor uh, from Calabria settles in in, in New York City. Um, the stonemason, the contractor uh, from from um, Naples, settles in um, Cleveland. And the stowaway who learned uh, the sardine business in 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 Palermo ends up eventually with his uncle in Monterey, California. How about that? Yeah. Well, Calabria. Now, the the tailor from Calabria. That's more connected to your background, correct? Because your Absolutely. family is originally from Calabria. Yes, exactly. And and um and my you know the interesting thing about this is it's actually the genesis of La America uh, was a um um a documentary that I wrote and associate produced in 2004 called Prisoners Among Us. It's about right. American immigration, assimilation, the events leading up to, up to World War II. Well, a lot of that is based not just on, on interviews and research, but I used to sit at the feet of my grandparents and, and great aunts and uncles and listen to their stories. Uh, but they were mostly stories about the old country. Um, they didn't tell me they were starving. They didn't tell me they had to get out of there. They didn't tell me about the brutal travel on the steamship where many people were raped and murdered. They didn't tell me about becoming what are called rag and bone men in New York City to make a nickel a day. They, they didn't say they didn't talk about any of that. And we found that was true when we 
were trying to pry the stories out of the people we interviewed for the documentary. They wouldn't talk about that stuff. And we eventually got the stories out. But, you know, I, I don't want to put, put us in a box, but Italians are very proud people. Right. And, uh, you know, they did what they had to do, rolled up their sleeves, went to work. Uh, and that's where that's where those of us uh, 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 from from, you know, th those of us who are, are descendants got our largely got our work ethic. Right. You know, it's funny you said that because that was the way it was with my uh, my, my father and my uncles when World War II. You know, they wouldn't tell you any, they wouldn't tell you the, 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 the harshness of it all. They would just kind of, just kind of glow over uh, the situation. It was different than say, um, uh, my older cousins went to Vietnam. They would, they would tell you the whole, you know, the whole saga right. from the beginning. Right. To end. Yeah. But the older people, they just, they kind of kept it quiet. Yeah. My father was a Marine in the South Pacific in World War II and he never talked about it. Um, and did you know, since you brought up World War II, that um, the largest uh, amount of casualties in World War II, ethnic group was Italians. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Italian Americans, yes. Yeah, yeah. They were very proud to, I mean, that was what my father always told me was, you know, right at Pearl Harbor, uh, there wasn't a, 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 man, a, man, a young man in sight that didn't want to join up and fight for his country. You know, it was just very, very patriotic then and still is now. Italian Americans are still very, very patriotic. Absolutely. And, and, and we bring a lot of that out in the book and ultimately the miniseries. I mean, these people come here, they fight for, to make a way for themselves and their, and their descendants um, through a lot of difficulty, but eventually they make a way for themselves and ultimately a way for us. Um, and, 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 they do. They, they go through situations that um, that we aren't aware of. Uh, I mean, you mentioned World War II. Well, when Hitler sided with the Axis, when when, when Mussolini side, sided with the Axis powers, Italians in the United States were immediately the day after labeled enemy aliens. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, six hundred thousand of them. Uh, were given uh, fingerprints, curfews, travel restrictions. Yeah. They had their houses uh, broken into and uh, uh, their, their, their flashlights and their radios confiscated. God forbid they should signal the subs. Yeah. And, and, and um, some were interned and um, some were relocated. On the West Coast, they drew a arbitrary line of demarcation down the urban areas. And if you were an Italian citizen and not an American citizen, you were relocated east of that line of demarcation. But when I say relocated, you were just told go. Yeah, yeah. They didn't make that any easier for you. You just had to go uh, because, like I said, God forbid you should signal the subs. Right, right, right. right. You, you know, there's one point I want to make, though, Truby, um, that's really important. When I was working on the documentary, and I was talking to my aunt, my mother's sister, about it. I was very proud about it. And I was telling her all about it and the relocations and, and you know, internment, all that kind of stuff. And uh, she looked at me with a blank face. And then she pointed her finger at me and said, don't make a movie about complainers. Italians aren't complainers. Yeah. And that stuck with me. Uh, and that was the tenor of the documentary and ultimately the book and the miniseries. These are stories of victory. These aren't stories of, oh, woe is me. These are stories of what our ancestors endured in order that we can be sitting here talking today. That's really something because, you know, the stoic is so Italian and it's something that we've uh, we used to have a lot in this country, but we're losing it every, every day. We seem to be losing more and more our stoicism. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's very you know the uh, the the book that you wrote now, but I mean you you did Prisoners Among Us. You were also am I correct? Is you were also were a writer for a while for a soap opera? Is that correct? Yes, you've had experience yeah, in this uh, in this field for some time. Yeah, I, I uh, well, I I, I uh, was a theater major um, in college, and uh, then I was going to be a, an actor, a director, and a writer. I was going to uh, win an Emmy, an Oscar. A right. Grammy, whatever they, whatever statuettes they got out there, well, I was right. going to get right. one. Right. And um, of course, it didn't work out that way. Cool. And so uh, I, I, you know, I had a real living. But I was fortunate enough to become a staff writer on ABC's Ryan's Hope. Yeah, that was a big soap uh, opera. Yeah, that's a that yeah. Was, that was yeah, a yeah, yeah. There was there were good people in there, but it, you know, it, it um, 
you know, I, the, my, my mother was very proud of it because every week she knew which episode I had written. And so she'd call up all her friends to tell them, you know, to watch that episode. Uh, but I, I wrote for theater. I wrote for film um, and, and some television. Uh, and I had never written a novel um in all those years i wrote a lot of theater right uh, but I, I have a nephew who is in film out on the west coast and he wanted to come over and watch with me prisoners among us one time so he came over and watched it and he said you know this first first comment was you should write the book um i said well, what do you mean he said and more people will read it more people will will have access to it this really is a book yeah, yeah and that, that that really was the genesis. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, Prisoners Among Us was such a, a big documentary, so important. And uh, I would think that your your work, uh, uh, you know, it's funny you you did work in the documentary, but then you also had did work in television uh, for soap opera, and you kind of combined both of these um, these talents for the novel. Mm -hmm. And now you can take that novel to what uh, to, to what you want to do right now as a miniseries. And so, how close are you? to the miniseries you got a website you got a lot of things going on there what's the um, how, how far are we away from actually seeing it on the uh, uh on the screen well uh, that depends on a couple of things we're in what's called the i'm learning this stuff as i go along right you know, I, yeah, I, 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 business. Yeah. i've never had a miniseries yeah yeah <laughs> so 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 um we're in what's called the development stage and in the development stage um you have a certain number of elements that you need to fulfill that gets you at the a seat at the table with the Netflix of the world. And so our producers, little studio films out in Beverly Hills, California, are have put together what's called a pitch deck. And uh, we've um, we've accumulated, fortunately, we've accumulated some investors and we're able to attach talent to the project so that we can eventually at what's called MIPCOM, which is the big television conference in Cannes, um, in October, uh, and uh, AFM, the American Film Market in Santa Monica in November, and the Italian Television Festival in November, we'll be able to go there and, like I say, have a seat at the table with the folks who will ultimately produce uh, film this, um, and, and and we'll have certain talent attached to it. I can't. I'm not at liberty to talk about who right. that is right now, but. We're talking about directors and producers, showrunners, uh, actors and actresses. Um, and so in this development phase, we're accumulating those people. We've written the pilot uh, and, um, and, and assembled certain other things. And so if all goes as planned, maybe the first of the year, we will have who is going, um, who's going to produce it. Uh, ultimately for television uh, it'll be 12 episodes at least that's where it is right now things are in flux all the time but uh, there'll be 12 episodes um, uh, and so it's a limited series and um, it will take probably a couple of years to film because you know, we have to we have to film all over the world um, oh, really? it's, it's a global story we're going to film in Italy we're going to film in the United States we're probably going to film in Malta because that's where they have uh, the big tanks for the ship scenes. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and there are other places that take advantage of um, uh, the the uh, tax incentives for filming. We'll yeah, be sure. filming there. Yeah. Uh, and and so I I would say I would say a couple of years. Well, that sounds kind of that sounds like a a, a very big project. And just from what the the buzz of it all, um, you know, a few years back, it, World War II was kind of the big thing, and uh, you saw HBO and some other things were doing a lot of stuff on the World War II events. It, it, it's, I don't know if I'm right about this, but it seems to me maybe a trend is now moving towards the turn of the century experience, maybe the immigrant experience, of course, maybe some other experiences. What's your thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I think that's true. And what's important to me um, is that, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't want to get carried away here, but... Of course, but of that the truth is told. This is the true immigration experience. In, in immigrations, if I can use the word heyday, this is the true immigration experience where, where 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people came from Eastern Europe and from Western Europe and, you know, from, from, from the United Kingdom. A uh, million, I say thousands, millions of people came and settled in this country and they all came the same way. They came by boat. They, their ports were different places. The largest port, obviously, was Ellis Island. But um, I want people to see, especially now, without getting political, I want people to see how the immigration experience existed for those folks who bought a ticket sold a donkey to buy a ticket to get on a boat to endure that brutal travel to come here and make a way i want that and that's what this book is about you know and and while mafia and the kamor and the black hand are a part of our experience they're a small part of our experience yeah, tiny yeah and, and 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 it's important to me that we don't stereotype the italian it's important to me that when we do this, well, it's in the book, but when we do it in the miniseries, it's important to me that people know that we don't just own pizza joints and off people. Yeah. You know, that's not the sum of our existence. Yeah. What, what Italians have returned in volume to this country, to this landscape we call America, is, is unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Well, you grew up in Pittsburgh. Yes. And I grew up in Northeast New Jersey, where a lot of people are Italians, of course. And it's funny, I didn't, uh, it was only when I left my home and I went to college and I went then to uh, law school, what have you. It was only then that I realized everybody pretty much thinks that if you're Italian, you're in the mob. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I told somebody once, I said, you know, growing up, I don't think I ever met anybody who was in the mob or in the mafia or anything connected to any criminal organization. And they would found it very surprising, but it's very true. I mean, we, you know, uh, I mean, you can you can speak about that growing up in Pittsburgh. All kinds of people were uh, there. You had all kinds of people working in different industries, professions. It's just a right. uh, whole different yeah, way. I, it, 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 yes. Did the mob exist? Absolutely. Okay. Um, in various forms, in various parts of the country, in various parts of Italy. Um, but they are not the sum of our existence, yeah. you know. And, and that's important to me to, you know, I... I I get on a soapbox. I mean, there was even, wasn't there a, 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 I don't know if it was a Pixar film or a Disney film. Was it shark story? Or yeah. That's right. Where right. the sharks were monsters. Right. All right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And this, you know, everybody knows us as Sopranos or Godfather or good fellas and uh, we're good fellas, but for other reasons. Yeah, exactly right. That's that's a good point you say. That's good. But that's what I like about the uh, your uh, La America, the way you wrote it, uh, the characters. Uh, it's just you 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 present a different side to uh, our experience. Um, but yet you, the history's still there. Uh, they're still confronted by the historical events that were so important at the time. Uh, you know, Sacco and Benzetti, the whole thing up to World War One, and uh, you, uh, you start going into other areas. And if you can capture that for a miniseries, this would be very, I think, I think it would be very enlightening and also very entertaining. Yeah, I, I, I like to think of it as water cooler conversation, you know, um, ultimately. Um, now, just so you know, um, the miniseries got me before I finished. This is actually supposed to be book two books, a two book series. This book goes from 19, the first book goes from 1915 to 1927 with the execution of Sacco and Benzetti. Uh, but then book two, and I'm about 17 chapters in, book two takes those same families to 1947. There's a very specific reason why it's 1947, but be that as it may, the miniseries got me before I finished the book. And so this, the treatments and the synopses and the, um, um, the log lines for the 12 episodes actually go to 1947 because I know the story. Uh, I just haven't finished filling in the blanks for the second book. Well, you know, growing, uh, growing up, a, a big uh, miniseries was The Winds of War, uh, and that had about World War II, and it was kind of a, you had this uh, family 
uh, from the United States and they were traveling throughout Europe. And uh, one of the one of the characters would meet these very famous people. You know, he would meet he met uh, Adolf Hitler. He met the Gaul. He met all these very famous people uh, of the war. Now, you kind of have uh, it sounds to me like it's going to be maybe not exactly the same thing, but somewhat similar that you can have very historical figures juxtaposed with what's going on with some of the characters. Is that right? You might also <laughs> introduce some of these historical figures at that time uh, for the miniseries. Absolutely. I mean, there are actual historical figures uh, who are in the book and ultimately will be in the miniseries. I and mean, that's that's part of our history and, and it's an important part of our history. I mean, the, 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 for example, and this is just a minor thing, but the, 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 the tailor uh, from Calabria who settles in New York City eventually hooks up with a guy who runs a company um, and um, uh, that company and that guy is a real person in history uh right. and it's someone who who helped save him uh from a disaster in 1929 from, mm, uh, interesting yeah so many great events at that period too you know with the, when you when you go into world war one and the anarchist movement here and then you go into yes. uh uh the the, the swinging uh, 1920s and just so many things happening at uh and, and it, you know i think it's going to be a um fascinating uh mini series i just really I just hope it really works out. I'm sure it will. It just sounds to me like that's uh, just from what I gather. It just seems like the real trend is moving in that area right now. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, uh, you know, the interesting thing is the Italian community in Hollywood, and I was out there not too long ago and I'm going back out again uh, for some things, but uh, the Italian community in Hollywood has been looking for a project like this, unbeknownst yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. They have been looking for something that doesn't focus on the mafia. And so they've rallied around this project, including the Italian uh, consulate. I had a meeting with the Italian consulate, and oh, they're really? all over this project. How about that? That's great. That's yeah. great. Well, I, I mean, so you're going to, I mean, you're, you're going to go to the uh, the conference for Italian television. Is some of this going to be, you're going to have the Italian language spoken, I guess, throughout part of the, uh, part of the miniseries. That's something that I think uh, will attract people as well. Yes, I I agree. I mean, and and, and actually, um, uh, we're you know we're looking at actors right now, and some of the actors that we're looking at, and I, I think it's the right move. So there are actor Italian actors. We may not know them; they're not household uh, American words. But Italian actors who can speak English um, are going to be perfect because their accents are going to be authentic. Yeah, I think that's great. I think we need that. You know. There's such a big pool of talent right now from Italy as well, oh, and, uh, really? actors and actresses. So this could be very exciting. So just tell us all about what, where, how, how can, where can people go um, to find the latest information on La Marica and uh, mm -hmm. about the miniseries in development. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a website. Uh, just give us the website real quick, and I'll put a link uh, in right. the description as okay. well. All right. Well, um, you can go to lamericaseries.com. That's our website. No, no apostrophe, just the lamericaseries.com. That's the website for uh, the miniseries. And it's going, it's, it's, it's in flux because things change. We add things, we subtract things. The other thing you can find on that is what we call a sizzle reel. It's kind of a trailer. Um, oh, yeah, I saw that. That was very well done, I thought. Yeah, a pre production um, that gives a tone of what the miniseries is going to be about. So I think people would enjoy that. And that's going to be, that's going to be played at all the festivals and that kind of thing. So lamericaseries.com. Uh, and, um, and actually, if you want the book, you can go to amazon.com to get the book, Lamerica. Well, I recommend the book highly. We gave it a rave review. It's an excellent you did. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, it was well-deserved. It was very well written. Uh, it flowed very well. That's what I like about it. It, it was just to kind of, kept you going, you know, page after page, you could read it and you know, the characters were very approachable, was very well uh, developed. And like I said, when I read it, I thought, well, yeah, this would make a perfect <laughs> mini series or some sort of television series. And sure enough, that's exactly what's happening. Your lips to God's ears. Exciting. We're also, I don't know if there's the occasional investor out there, but when you go to lamericaseries.com, there's a place you can go um, to get more information if you're uh, interested in investing in the mini series. And I hope people will do that because, you know, we hear a lot of complaints, right? That we're, uh, uh, well, the only time we get to uh, see anything about Italian Americans is with the mafia or some sort of criminality. Well, guys, if you have the money and you can put your money where your mouth is, this is the opportunity for it. You can really invest in a really good project. There's other projects out there too, but this is really a, a way if you really want to try and change the dynamic and get rid of the stereotypes, present a different face 
of Italian Americans for uh, the television audience. This is a great opportunity. I appreciate that. Great. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Joe, thank you very much. I hope you um, uh, keep us posted as to the development. It's very exciting. And, um, you know, it's, I'm sure it's going to be a, a very well received by everyone. I thought the book was excellent. And uh, if the mini series is anywhere near that, it's going to be quite good. Well, I really appreciate it, Sylvia. And I appreciate all your support along the way. It's really important to me. Primo Magazine is a great magazine. And um, you do a great service for the Italian American community. And uh, keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much, Joe. You too. Keep up the great work and uh, definitely keep us posted. Great. I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.